The young hacker with an anonymous was only 16 when his group Lulsec launched attacks on the FBI, Fox News, and Sony, exposing customer data for 25 million users. The hackers were on a rampage, gaining access to Fortune 500 companies and even the Pentagon, only to have one of their own members turn against them. This is the Lulsec group. Mustafa Alpasan was born in 1995 in Iraq and came with his family to London in the year 2000. He discovered his passion for computer programming at the age of 8. His journey into hacking began when he was completing math homework, as he managed to use an online calculator for his first hack. He would realise that simple programming errors could cause significant damage, providing unauthorised access to websites. As Mustafa's skills grew, he decides to put his skills to the test. He managed to hack into the school's website. Upon gaining access, he uncovered sensitive information such as teacher salaries and classmates' grades. Mustafa was intrigued with the possibilities of the hacking world and started engaging with the international hacking movement, Anonymous. He would use the online alias, Tflow. One of Mustafa's early operations with Anonymous involved hacking the Prime Minister of Tunisia during a revolutionary period. The intention was not just to showcase hacking prowess, but to highlight the poor security of the targeted organisations. We replaced his front page with a message to support the revolution, Mustafa recalls. Following these experiences, Mustafa would co-found the group Lulset, known to be an extension of the anonymous group, a collective that stood out for its lack of political motives. Their objective was to expose vulnerabilities in companies' digital defences. For a span of 50 days in 2011, Mustafa, at the age of 16, played a pivotal role as one of the central members in the world's most infamous hacking collective. Operating under Lulsec, Mustafa actively participated in a string of impactful cyber attacks, targeting major entities such as the CIA, Fox News, the FBI, the Arizona Police Department, and the US Senate. The Lulsec group and members that spanned from the US, the UK, and Australia would launch a string of attacks with varying motives. PBS fell victim to a fabricated story about Tupac and Biggie residing in New Zealand. Their hacking spree expanded to companies like Nintendo, Bethesda Studios, and a significant assault on Sony's PlayStation Network, exposing 24.6 million customers' data. They even would go on to leak documents from the Pentagon. Their intent was revealed after they were arrested. It was attention-seeking, embarrassing websites, and mocking security measures. In the beginning, they would find vulnerabilities within companies and contact the companies about the vulnerabilities, only for them to ignore the warnings. So they realised the only way they could get these companies to address these vulnerabilities was by hacking them themselves. While there was no financial motive behind the attacks, by spreading private information, including credit card details, they caused substantial financial burdens, defending their actions by deeming insecure sites as risks to their users. While Lulsec's actions weren't profit-driven as a group, individual members like Ryan Cleary found ways to exploit their skills. While Cleary wasn't a core member of the group, he operated a botnet for spam, phishing, and denial of service attacks, earning substantial sums. In 2011, Mustafa and Lulsec hacked HB Gary Federal, a tech security company, claiming they had knowledge of anonymous leaders. To determine whether Aaron Barr who was the CEO of HB Gary Federal, was acting rationally when he set his sights on Anonymous, it's tough to say. His aim was to connect Facebook and IRC activities to reveal the key figures within the group. In the realm of black hat hacking, exposing one's true identity is a dreaded scenario for every hacker. Barr's approach seemed to be a bid for much needed attention for a struggling company by targeting a well-known group. However, it had an unintended consequence of attracting the attention of the hacking collective itself. Aaron Barr, you would have thought would have anticipated a response from Anonymous. After all, he considered himself an expert in software security, leading his own security firm. In less than 24 hours, Lulsec assumed complete control over the HB Gary Federal website and database. They would manage to find the details of the CEO's password and expose how that password was used on all his other accounts, including email and PayPal. They also commandeered Bar's Facebook, Twitter, Yahoo, and even his World of Warcraft profile. The HB Gary Federal homepage 
underwent a transformation, featuring a declaration and a link to a torrent file housing around 50,000 emails. Simultaneously, the employed social engineering techniques to SSH into the rootkit.com site wiped out its entire contents. The prowess of these few anonymous hackers became evident. They were exceptionally skilled. The headlines flashed across screens worldwide as Lulsec's attack became public knowledge. While Mustafa was one of the main members of the group, it's important to mention some of the other known members. Hector Monsiger, known online as Cebu, Jake Davis, known as Taperi, and Ryan Aykroyd, known as Kayla. Hector stood as the oldest member among the group. He would organize daily operations and settle disputes within the team. Showcasing exceptional hacking skills, developed through prior experiences hacking government websites in his native land of Puerto Rico, he distinguished as a hacktivist. Hector advocated hacking for social causes. His expertise extended beyond computer systems. He was a proficient social engineer, manipulating people to align Lulsec with his vision. Jake Davis may have possessed less technical skill compared to the other members of the group, but his gift with words more than compensated for it. Renowned for his articulate expression, Jake assumed control of the official Lulsec's Twitter feed where he would taunt the group's victims and engage their extended fan base. Jake's roots trace back to the early days of Anonymous on the popular image board 4chan. His clever speech made him particularly good at prank calls, often live streaming it to his followers. Recognizing his talent, he naturally assumed the role of the mouthpiece for Anonymous. When the official Anonymous message replaced the homepage of HB Gary, the new homepage would be his work. While Jake might not be perceived solely as a hacker, his involvement with Anonymous and Lulsec facilitated technical skill development. Ryan Aykroyd, during his teenage years, developed a keen interest in video games, finding enjoyment in hacking them and connecting with like-minded people online. Among these people was Caleb. They started to form a friendship online and had their own group. The group faced problems when a rival video game hacking group targeted singling out the weakest link, 16-year-old Kayla. The rival hackers wreaked havoc on Kayla's social networks and even infiltrated her parents' bank accounts, leaving Ryan and his friends irritated. In retaliation, they collectively pursued the rival group, adopting the alias Kayla to honor her. Their retribution was so impactful that Kayla gained a formidable reputation in their corner of the internet. As the years passed, the group disbanded, but Ryan persisted. Ryan would maintain the persona of the 16-year-old girl, Kayla, to help cover his identity. It was Ryan who employed social engineering tactics to infiltrate rootkit.com. Ryan also uncovered the SQL injection vulnerability on the HB Gary Federal website and subsequently developed a program to rapidly scan URLs for zero-day vulnerability exploits. A self-taught reverse engineer, he arguably stood out as the most skilled hacker in the Lulsex team. Remarkably, Ryan would implement a tripwire in his apartment that triggered a wipe of all hard drives upon police entry, earning the description of being highly forensically aware. This legal terminology translates to acknowledging his profound expertise. The London police, equipped with evidence from 80 different cyber attacks, moved in to apprehend Mustafa and other members of Lulsex. Four members of the Lulsec group were handed sentences in London. Jake Davis, Brian Aykroyd, and Ryan Cleary all received prison sentences. While Mustafa received a 20-month suspended sentence due to being only 16 at the time of his crimes. He was 18 when he was arrested and was also assigned to 320 hours of community service. The rest of the group were all in their 20s when they engaged in a hacking spree called 50 Days of Lulz in the spring of 2011. During this period, they stole passwords, credit card details, and email addresses, and executed denial of service attacks against various websites. The group claimed responsibility for hacking Sony's Japan website, attacking PBS in protest of Frontline's documentary on WikiLeaks, and breaching Fox.com, where they exposed employee passwords and personal information of 73,000 individuals who signed up for the X Factor editions. Ryan Aykroyd pleaded guilty to stealing data from Sony and interfering with the Sun newspaper site. He received a 30-month sentence. Jake Davis was sentenced to two years, 
to be served in a youth detention center. Despite the seemingly low tech nature of their activities, prosecutor Sanpit Patel described the hackers as being on the cutting edge of contemporary and emerging species of criminal offenders known as cyber criminals. Crown prosecutor Andrew Haddock stated in court, the harm they caused was foreseeable, extensive and intended. Indeed, they boasted about how clever they were with a complete disregard for the impact their actions had on real people's lives. Now, for Hector Montsegur, who was a core member of the group, but wasn't on the arrested list. Well, before the arrest took place, he fell into the FBI's grasp due to a significant security lapse. Despite constantly concealing his internet protocol address through proxy servers, a single instance saw him logging into an internet chat room without masking his IP address. This enabled the FBI to pinpoint his location. Tracing the proxy server, they apprehended Hector at his New York City apartment. Facing a potential 124 years in prison, Hector agreed to serve as an informant amongst the fellow hackers. Notably, neither his family nor his associates in Anonymous and Lulsec were aware of his collaboration. Hector's every move was monitored by federal handlers as he spent 8 to 16 hours daily on his computer. Working closely with the FBI, he informed over 300 government, financial and corporate entities in the US and beyond about vulnerabilities in their systems that were identified by hackers. Maintaining the secrecy in his corporation for months allowed Hector to continue communicating with fellow hackers, collecting information for authorities without arousing suspicion. Hector provided the FBI with crucial insights into the activities, identities and locations. Additionally, he assisted in identifying vulnerabilities in various computer systems and networks that were exploitable by hackers. In a peculiar turn of events, while serving as an informant for the FBI, Hector actively participated in hacking activities, orchestrating attacks on various websites and networks. This was done with the FBI's knowledge and approval, a strategy aimed at preventing his cover and gathering more intelligence. Ironically, Hector found himself helping in attacks against law enforcement systems from behind an FBI desk, all while working to mitigate the damage caused by these attacks. In March 2012, after the arrest, Hector announced that he had been acting as an FBI informant for several months. This revelation surprised many of the members in the hacking community, as Sobu, his online alias, was perceived as a pivotal member of Lulsec and a vocal supporter of online activism. The news of Hector's collaboration with the FBI received diverse reactions. Some commended it for renouncing illegal hacking and assisting law enforcement in apprehending other hackers. Others accused him of betrayal and selling out his fellow hackers. Hector later addressed his cooperation with the FBI in a public statement. In interviews with various media outlets, he clarified that the decision to cooperate stemmed from the prospect of a lengthy prison sentence and a desire to protect his family. He asserted that his motivation was to make amends for his past actions and contribute to preventing future cybercrime. Despite the controversy surrounding Hector's collaboration, it is widely recognised that his actions played a crucial role in dismantling several hacking groups and disrupting numerous illicit activities. Following his arrest, Hector spent seven months in prison, but was released while waiting sentencing. On May 27, 2014, during his sentencing, he received credit for time served due to his cooperation with the FBI, being released under a one-year probationary period. Now, back to Ryan Cleary, known online as Viral, who was also arrested. As I mentioned before, he was not a primary member of the Lazarus Group but was responsible for supplying hacking tools and hacking US Air Force computers, receiving the longest sentence of 32 months in prison. On a more disgusting note, police found two computers owned by the 21-year-old. On the computers were 172 images of indecent children. Some were aged as young as six months old. Cleary received two community orders related to the images. All these people were not the only members apprehended for their involvement at Lulset. The following months after the initial arrest, Cody Kretzinger, known by the online name Recursion, 
received a sentence of one year of home detention, along with a thousand hours of community service. Also, Australian authorities have arrested another individual believed to be a member of the Lulsec group. After the arrests, Mustafa moved on from black hat hacking. He went to university and completed a bachelor's degree and completed a PhD in computer science from the Kingston College in London. In 2016, he was listed by Forbes as one of the 30 under 30 members in the technology section and even has an estimated net worth of five to $10 million. He's now a renowned cybersecurity expert and co-founder of the company Celestial Labs that works with blockchain technology. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that video, be sure to subscribe and click another video on screen if you're interested.